Good evening, everybody. Madam Clerk. Councilmember Von Rudenberg. Here. Deputy Mayor Canestrino. Here. Deputy Mayor Sims. Here. Councilmember Pataglia. Here. Mayor LaBros. Here. This meeting is being held in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act, NJSA 10 colon 4 6 et sec. Notice having been published according to law with a copy on file in the city clerk's office and a copy posted on the bulletin board in city hall. Could everybody please rise for the flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, and with that, we're going to go right into the agenda. Okay, we're ready. Kathy, do you want to speak about the FAA first? All right, we can do that first. Um, okay, so the, uh, you know, looking at our alternate flight plan, flight path issue, uh, there was uh, a meeting on January 8th, I think I announced it a number of times, uh, and I attended on behalf of the, of the city, and basically, it was very interesting. Basically, it wasn't really a meeting. There were lots of boards set up around the room, and there were folks stationed at each board, and they kind of took you through the entire process that went on with this in environmental evaluation and, and to determine whether or not it was feasible or not feasible to do um, the flight path. And you know the good news is that you know their recommendation is that it is feasible, and uh, you know basically it was as far as noise goes, and that's primarily what they were looking at. Even though we were much more concerned about safety than noise, um, as far as noise goes, it was it was definitely a net positive gain. So, example, there were say uh, say the top number that they've been recording as far as decibel levels. Uh, it was 60 to 65 decibels, of which is the group that we in Hackensack are predominantly in. So there was a net decrease of 2,100 people that would move lower out of that group. And of course, no one was moving higher than the 60 to 65. So definitely the study and the noise assessment proved that on top of providing safety and, and additional benefits to the folks that are in this current flight path, it also shows in a positive way that the, uh, that the noise would also be better for, not just Hackensack, but for the majority of folks that are in that, in the current path, and even in the new path where it may be flying at a higher altitude. So that was a very, very positive statement. I was happy that I went. The thing is, and we've posted it on our website, and I know we've sent some emails out, and I'm gonna hold up a, a poster in a minute to remind folks, but um, what they did is they published this paper on their website, which is a lot of details, and of course you're all free to read it and take your time as you choose to. But on their website, there's a button that says submit comment. And if you push that button, you just have to give a minimal amount of information, your name, address, and email, and you can comment on the study. When I was there, they asked me if we could kind of rally together because there is a, a, a definite positive impact for Hackensack there and get positive comments. And you know, I said, you know, that's something you don't think about. When someone asks me to comment on a study or, or comment on a paper, you, you try to comment on what you don't agree with rather than what you do agree with. So it's kind of a unique, unique way of looking at it, but all of this would definitely help support this flight path. So I'm really asking everyone in the city that feels positively about it or has other concerns. Certainly either way, you're free and you should be commenting should you have other concerns. But I'm hoping that we also get, I know that we had a lot of support the night that they were here a couple of years ago, we packed this house and we had a lot of folks here that uh, were very interested in seeing this change, especially for our residents. So folks, you know, it's very quick. It's gonna take you just a couple of minutes so if I could, you know, I asked you to help with, with calling in the noise and, and you guys did great, so I'm asking you one more time. Uh, the time period to comment ends January 30th, so there's really not a lot of time. So it's something that you wanna go home tonight and do it, or you know, remind yourself, set it, put it on your calendar to do it really quickly, because January 30th will be here before we know it. All right, I think you have this on video, um, hopefully, but I'm gonna hold it up so people that are looking can read it as well. Um, I'll read it as I leave it here. 
I, you can submit it via email and there's an email address on here as well. But I found the easiest way is to go to their website, which is listed on here in the green section. And I'll just say it. So if you're writing it down at home, you can see it. It's faa.gov forward slash air underscore traffic forward slash community involvement forward slash TEB forward slash. Okay, and that will take you directly to the website. The paper is there and you're free to read it and comment as you see fit. And it was a little strange, like when I looked at it, because to me, when I see submit comment, it means I've already written my comment, so I was looking for a place to enter it, but that's what you do. It, it, it probably should say enter comment, but when you hit submit comment, that's when you're prompted to actually enter your comment. So do that, and then um, it, it will really help. You know, I thank everyone who supported this initiative throughout the last few years. We've all been working hard together. This is still on track for the end of March. Now, again, that means that it will be finalized the end of March. The rollout, of course, you know, everybody really using it is probably going to take, you know, a few more weeks to really see the positive aspect of it. But this is a critical phase. They have one month to get public information, and that's the part of the phase that we're in right now. So. However you can help support this, we as a city council really appreciate it and we know it's going to be positive for all of our residents. So I thank you in advance for doing that. Thanks, Ted. No problem. Uh, first on my list is the off-grid wind solar powered lights. Um, this was brought to our attention from um, Councilman Von Rudenberg and basically it's a wind turbine that builds power so you don't have to run electrical lines or underground um, for lighting. So excess power for optional USB charging ports, branding and advertising opportunities for it, and uh, wind and solar data could be used through the STEM program. So my question to the mayor and council, is this something that you want these folks to come in and do a demonstration? Is there any interest to it? I have no idea at this point what this would cost and we'd obviously have to enter some of this into the budget as a trial basis, but I'll take input or direction from the mayor and council if that's an interest. I think I would definitely like to learn more about it. I think, you know, any way that, that we can help environmentally and at the same time, you know, save money for our taxpayers, <clears throat> it's, it's something worth looking into. I also think, Ted, we should notify the Board of Education, too, because I think mm -hmm. what I read in the paperwork is a lot of schools are doing this. Yeah, I actually visited Woodcliff Lake Middle School where they have it, and it's, it's interesting. I mean, it's, it's definitely a... A learning opportunity for the kids but if it's a way to save money for the city and um, you know, work together with the Board of Ed on this then why Especially not look in at support it. of the STEM programs at the Absolutely. school I mean I think there'd probably be a lot of interest it could be a great learning experience mm -hmm. and certainly help out we should definitely reach out to the superintendent yep. and share with him or invite him if we're gonna have a speaker maybe we can invite someone from the right. board to come mm -hmm. okay uh, number two on my list is an amendment of the fire department's fee schedule um, this fee schedule has not been updated since 2015. I urge department heads to make sure that we're staying, we're, we're not looking to overcharge people, but we certainly are trying to maintain our operational costs to cover for these fees. So in your books is a list of the recommended changes that would explain the increases for the fees. And uh, my only encouragement is that we don't wait five years I'd like to see us get a, on a regular rotation where we actually adjust these every two years because there's going to be somebody that's once these fees go up are going to say, oh my God, you know, city raised this rate. Well, it's been five years since we've raised this rate. So I just want to keep standard. So unless there's a, an issue with council members or questions about it, um, I would be making this recommendation and improving the proposed um, 2020 rate increases. Um, third on my list is the City of Hackensack Plastic Bag Ordinance. Um, we have neighboring communities that have completely eliminated plastic bags in all stores. So it's either paper or those tote bags that you bring to the grocery store for this. Um, the current communities that have already made the change, um, there's Anjack makes the no plastic um, comment, and somewhere on my list, I saw it. We have um, 
municipalities currently by us are Glen Rock, Hoboken, Teaneck, and um, um, Paramus. I think Paramus too. Paramus. Thank you. So um, this would be a change citywide for all of our retail stores, but I think this trend is, is, is heading um, in our direction in all municipalities, and I think the, the use of plastic bags are going to go by the wayside here. Um, I guess Mother Earth deserves better, and we need to give it to her. So anybody that's ever been to a landfill, those plastic bags are just all over the place. So um, it's only for discussion tonight, but uh, Mayor Council at some point should probably give us some serious consideration if you need more input or somebody from our recycling coordinator or someone to bring in. Um, I'm not here to sway people, but that trend I think is, is, is on track to be approved in, in virtually all municipalities and certainly in the state of New Jersey. Uh, number four for me is mutual aid deployment force. This is the annual agreement that we sign um, every year for the city of Hackensack and the uh, reciprocal agencies that we share resources, especially under a mutual aid uh, rapid deployment for the police department. Um, Whereas law enforcement officers have the responsibility to provide a preparedness against natural emergencies such as floods, hurricanes, earthquakes, major storms, man-made causes, civil unrest, civil disobedience, riots, strikes, jails, prisons, riots, train wrecks, uh, aircraft uh, crashes, major fires, disorderly riots, terrorism, incidents, and bombings, and the state is a declared emergency. So this basically unites all of our law enforcement forces together in the protection of our residents and the county of Bergen. Uh, number five. I have a question for the police department. Um, does this just apply to force that's on active duty or does this also permit us or are we required to bring in overtime folks to handle this mutual aid? If, if the need um, strikes us, then additional resources would be called out. And I had a brief discussion with the mayor. When you call out mutual aid, the officers that are called out, they're on our dime. It would be our overtime. If it's a workman comp issue, you're in for the whole. So if we join this select group and we support this, which uh, under the circumstances, um, I don't see a way around it to be candid. Um, we would be responsible for our officers and, and our financial responsibilities. I'll just go into a little detail about what I was concerned about is uh, I'm totally in favor of mutual aid helping other towns, but there is a cost and sometimes the cost, you know, I, I, I'm just curious why the cost isn't shared with the town that we're sharing our aid with. For instance, if we have a, a large incident or fire in a neighboring quite large town, for instance, with a population similar to ours, we have a paid fire department, they don't, all right? There's only four, really five paid fire departments in the whole county. Um, we respond with all our equipment because it's a large fire. We're on the hook, the taxpayer of Hackensack is on the hook for every penny of that. For every firefighter, if a firefighter is injured and sustains, or a couple of them are injured and sustain some pretty serious injuries, you could be looking at in workers' comp costs, hundreds, hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not millions of dollars, in cost to take care of our firemen. That is also burden is on us. I mean, I know I do realize we do get some money back, but well, my concern is if there was a declared emergency. Um, we would be reimbursed by FEMA or right. uh, PO. The other issue is if we had a volunteer fire department and they got injured, they'd still be on our workers' comp. Volunteers right. are still covered under it, uh, it just Correct. like volunteers fall down, and, right. you know, we'd still be on the hook for it. But obviously being a big organization, our resources cover a lot more territory than... Of the four or five departments, we are definitely the largest and the best. And I'm just concerned that uh, for the taxpayers themselves bearing the burden, I'm wondering, I, me personally, I think it should be shared by the, the communities that we help right. as well. I agree. So, something we need to look into. 
especially uh, if it requires overtime, which gets very expensive. Okay. The next is the ordinance amendment of 170-6 general parking regulations. Um, after reviewing this, um, 170.6 general parking regulations rather than 17-70, which deals with certain streets. So we're going to fix one street. No person shall park any vehicles on the sidewalk or part thereof. Um, we're gonna address that. And then there are three other streets that are gonna be added later um, for a change of parking. Uh, I'm looking for the list of those streets are. Um, This is obviously to address also bicycles on, on streets, hand carts. I'm just trying to find the- Well, I mean, do you want me, you want me to jump in on this sure. one? I mean, so, so the, 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 one, the, the ordinance regarding section 170-6 specifically um, adds to the general parking regulations that you're not allowed to park a vehicle on a sidewalk or a part of a driveway occupying a sidewalk meaning you know hey you can't have the bumper of your car impeding the progress of pedestrians or people you know maybe in a wheelchair or something like that um unless a law enforcement officer you know tells you hey you know you need to 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 park there for whatever reason um the, the specific genesis of this particular ordinance is uh even though hackensack in its city code has another provision that talks about all sorts of vehicles, carts, horses, uh, you know, any, uh, you know, uh, any, any type of uh, impediment to sidewalks in another section of the city code. Because this is in the vehicles and traffic section, it will be easier for our enforcement personnel to write tickets and have it recognized within the state's system for processing tickets as opposed to writing it as a separate ordinance violation in an entirely different chapter of the city code. So this was recommended by the constable after uh, discussions with the court that this would just be a more effective way of enforcing it. It doesn't repeal the other provision. It just makes it easier for them to uh, cite people and have it, uh, you know, kind of fit as a square peg into a square hole when it comes to the court system. My, my concern on it, and it, it, it's weather related, a lot of times we will beg people and ask people to get your cars off the street in a snowstorm. If I do that with the length of my driveway and go car to car, my car's two feet into the sidewalk. To me, that's the lesser of the two evils. Right, it's covered in the ordinance that it does uh, identify that that is a condition. However, in a snowstorm, I don't know if the whole world has time to measure out that that bumper or that Twelve inches is protruding across. Well, as the long sidewalk. as as long as there's room for people to walk around it and still be on the sidewalk and on, on the pathway, I think that's fine. Right. I mean, I I think that's the kind of thing where that would be something the police department, in terms of enforcement, um, you know, they obviously have a lot of discretion in terms of enforcement. I don't think it's the best idea to kind of carve anything out and give people the idea that it's okay to do that. But I think, you know, there can be an understanding, hey, you know, when there's a massive snowstorm, you know, and somebody's trying their best to comply, you know, look, well, it's really not the time and place to write a ticket. Kathy's on the same block as me. We worked very hard. I worked very hard, I know, on, on asking people to put their cars in the driveways yeah. if they can fit the two cars. Yeah. And I'd hate for them to now get tickets because I asked them to Well, well keep, keep in mind, this is, this, this is already already prohibited just in another section of the city code. Right, right. So we're not reinventing well, the wheel here. Yeah. So it's never been I think a lot of it should relate to cars that are parking, you know, literally parking on the sidewalk. Yeah. Right. Like on Green Street. Like on Green Street, right. What if I told them? There you go. Uh, number six is a discussion, or, I'm sorry, a resolution for beekeepers and bee city mm -hmm. um there is one municipality that's been the first in the state to be a bee city in may of 2018 a gentleman who was a teacher at the high school came and spoke at the cow meeting for the city participating in general resolutions not to support regulation of bees nothing was ever discussed after the meeting so I, I think the attempt was to have this discussion, inform the public, educate the council, 
make a decision and move forward and it never went anywhere. So I have a sneaky suspicion that this gentleman is going to tell us about beekeeping. <laughs> oh, hold on one second. I have to open the meeting to the public before we can do that. Okay. No. Unless it's a presentation. Yeah. As no. a presentation? Yeah. We'll do it as a presentation? Yeah. Okay. okay. That's fine. Have at it. How are you? Good evening, Mayor. Good evening Council. Um, once again, my name is Sharif Tisuni. I am a teacher of Hackensack High School. And um, as of three months ago, I am the uh, one of two advisors for the uh, Beekeepers Club at the high school. Uh, I brought with me also two students from the Beekeepers Club who would like to mention a few, uh, a few comments. So the reason we're here tonight is because we want to emphasize the importance of pollinators and why the city of Hackensack should become a bee city. Uh, this is important to me and the families of the community of Hackensack. This is important to the kids. Uh, whose future we're trying to protect okay before i go on i'd rather just um, have andreas and um caitlin speak to you just just briefly caitlin, sure would you mind going up first um good evening everyone well i'm i'm caitlin heredia um louder. No louder. speak up a little bit go ahead don't be shy <laughs> i'm sorry we're your friends. Talk to us like we're your friends. <laughs> then you're screaming at your brother. <laughs> um, um, I'm, I'm a student in high school and um, I'm part of the Bee Club. Um, I think it's really important that, you know, every day our environment changes really quickly and, you know, we have to preserve it. And, like, we have, to, like, there's many changes in, um, in the environment that's, like, really good, but, like, still we have to look after it. And, like, there's a lot of beautiful things in nature, and I guess we have to like preserve it as long as we can, so many future generations can see and learn about it. Bees are like they help us a lot, and like yeah. Thank you. So thank you. I'll pass the mic over to my dad. Hey, Caitlin. Hello, I'm Andreas Georges. I'm also a student at the high school. And so whenever, since I was a kid, I've always been in love with animals, anything living kind of plants. And so when I heard Ms. Chasuni keep talking about bees, at first I was like, I wonder why he likes it. But then as he kept explaining it, I understood that it's like having an, its own ecosystem that helps the actual ecosystem. And then uh, there's this one stat that says 90% of the world's flowering plants depend on pollinators to reproduce and as bees are the one of the main sources uh, one of the best pollinators in the world it's very important to have them around and they're actually becoming uh, they're getting towards becoming extinct uh, over throughout the years because of humans and if we in our community can even make a little dent in helping the world and our community to to have more pollinators we can make a big change and that having bees in the community I believe will have a positive change in our environment and that it'll help the families in our community learn more about them and have a nicer uh, environment filled with bees and pollinators. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, son. Thank you both. Um, so just to add for, for those within the earshot, one in three bites of the food that we eat is due directly to pollinators, um, which of course are endangered and or in danger of or in danger of losing them. That of course is a lot more than the honeybee that we're all familiar with. There's over two thousand different species of bees. Most of them are native. Most of them we cannot manage, but for preserving certain areas or. Um, reducing the use of certain pesticides that are harmful to them and that's kind of the foundation where this resolution comes from B City USA also has a direct website where they lay these out these uh, directions much more clearly I have the copies of the, the directions for the uh, city manager and the clerk I'll pass those down in, in a little while but while I have your attention the idea is to build habitats with mostly native species, provide diverse, abundant pollinator food sources, um, use pesticides-free materials and sources, uh, plants from nurseries that do not treat seeds with, uh, excuse me for one, one second, neonicotinoids, uh, which what they are is basically, um, 
excuse me, that's a tough word that lost me there, um, which penetrate the entire plant as and remain active uh, for as much as a year in the woody plants. And, and of course, bees have a hard time um, dealing with this, and that's why we're seeing such losses, or at least it's one of the many reasons. Um, Becoming a BCD sends a message to the citizens of Hackensack that you care about the quality of life in this city. Uh, Ridgewood is so far the only city in northern New Jersey to be a bee city. I'm looking forward to Hackensack becoming the next city. Um, I'd like to leave you with one um, Greek proverb. It says, a society grows when old men plant trees whose shade they may never sit in. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Good job. Good. Yeah. Comments, council? Um, I think it's a, a great idea. Um, I know we floated the idea around um, last year, and it's come up at a few different of the environmental commission meetings. Um, you know, people don't realize how important bees are. Really, they're. I mean, they're just um, a huge part of uh, the ecology and um, the environment. Um, and I think kids have a, a real interest in it. They don't have a lot of access to see real beehives, but they have one at Liberty Science Center, and I know that's one of the big areas. You see a bunch of kids, you know, around the beehive looking at, you know, it's amazing. They have the queen, the queen bee, and what goes on, and it really is like its whole little own um, city in there. So I think anything that could um, enlighten, you know, the city and help the kids learn and educate about the environment. I mean, we have the community gardens going, we have different initiatives. This fits right in. So if um, we can, you know, do this and support it, I think it would be a great idea. Abe? Hey. I'm sorry. Okay. I mean, I'll just echo what Steph said, and I think it's something we can ask the Environmental Committee. Maybe they'll comment during comment period if they have any ideas now or if they need some more time to look into it. But incorporating it into the area we have designated for the community garden, I think, would make a lot of sense. And if it's something we can partner with the schools on so that the children have hands-on, even better. So I think we should definitely look into it. Mm -hmm. I'm all for um, the B community, for Hackensack being the second one. I'm down in the garden all summer long, and to have these bees pollinate some of the crops, I think it would be a, a great thing. And I think we need to not sit on this and wait, and hopefully by the beginning or the end of spring, we can be designated as the second bee community in the northern New Jersey. Uh, I don't know if it's Sharif needs help filling out the paperwork, or if the city's going to fill out paperwork. I'm quite sure that we got the city. The city could not sit on this and fill out the paperwork, and they can put this beehive in the corner down there, away from everybody. I think it'd be a great for the community. Leo? No comment. No comment. Uh, I think it's a great idea. I'd love to be a. Uh, a bee city. I think I had mentioned last time you were here. I have a my sister in law is a beekeeper. My co workers are beekeeper. Actually, two co workers are beekeepers. We have beehives at the hospital, um, which produce a considerable amount of honey. It's amazing how much honey they do produce. But uh, I think it's a, it's a great opportunity. It's a great educational opportunity for the for the kids. Uh, I agree with David. You know, if we could do something down or you know like a city beehive down by the uh, garden would be great. But also allow beekeepers throughout the city in their, you know, in their backyards to have bees. I mean, my uh, coworker and my sister-in-law both have bees, uh, beehives in their backyards, and they never have an issue. And uh, you know, she has beautiful gardens, and <laughs> it's 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 a, you know, it's it's just great. It's productive. It's educational. It's it's all good stuff. So I'm totally in favor of it. So. And I will ask that uh, maybe you can ask Jacqueline tomorrow to call Ridgewood yeah, and I, see what they, how you know what process they went through to become B City number one in Bergen County, so we can become number two. Okay. Yeah, I, okay. Del has already talked to Ridgewood. So okay, if you good. want her to call, she can get information right. too. The other thing that we already have is we have a sample resolution mm -hmm. that's provided. So quite candidly, I wouldn't think it would take much of an adjustment to make this happen sooner than later. Um, so if that's the case, we'll get the staff to do the follow-up 
We'll have a resolution prepared for the next council meeting. If the mayor and council all feel as strongly as they do now, I would assume we'll have a passing resolution. Any paperwork that would be needed to assist you in filling this out, either with the state or whatever agency that, that this would have. I'm sure our environmental committee, Gary over there, um, seems to be able to take charge of a lot of things. Having bees in our community garden, just it just makes complete sense. So um, we'll make it happen. Okay, good. Thank you. Next. Uh, next is, um, uh, here's one. Immunization. Uh, oh, immuni Immunizations. Yeah, I'll get that right here in a minute here. <laughs> For school-aged children. Um, this is a resolution. I don't know if this is one it has that needs to be addressed or not. Steve, you want to enlighten a little? I, I, I think uh, this is something that Councilwoman Von Rudenberg has some interest in, so I would refer this to her for comments. Sure. So um, it didn't pass in the Senate today at the state level. Um, I know there's there's mixed feelings. It's been in the news uh, lately in New Jersey that they want to pass um, not having any exemptions to vaccinations um, in the school. Um, I have a little bit of mixed feelings on it. Um, my children are vaccinated, um, but I was able to tailor it the way I wanted to. Um, I didn't see a need for a one day year old infant to have a hepatitis B vaccine. I didn't feel it was ever appropriate to give a child five vaccinations at one time. I was able to spread it out um, and, and give it to them when I felt that they were healthy. Um, if they had a cold, I didn't feel like that they could, you know, their bodies might not be able to handle it. I know many um, parents that feel that immunizations have caused harm to their children. Um, I know many people that's, you know, permanent harm. I know many parents that feel that their children got very ill from um, vaccines. And I just think it should be a parent's right on how um, they want to vaccinate their children. Um, obviously, it's a slippery slope because, you know, you want kids to be healthy in a public setting. But again, um, some of the um, criteria in this bill was you know very stringent where it didn't give parents um much leeway in how they felt the best um medical care was for their children and you know it goes back to how long things are around um you know the hpv vaccine just came out that would be a mandatory uh vaccination i don't know if there's enough research on the hpv vaccine i'm not sure i'm not a, a medical professional but i think as a parent i have a right to say if i want my child vaccinated against hpv or not um, it used to be that antibiotics were, you know, anytime your child was sick, antibiotic, antibiotic, antibiotic. Now there's research to say, you know what, wait, wait a little bit until you give antibiotic because there's a resistance to it. So I just think it's, um, it's, it's a slippery slope. I think it's a, a bill that, you know, it's taking a lot of, you know, rights away from parents and, and good parenting and their right on how they want uh, medical um, necessity for their children. So that's my my feeling on it I can also see both sides um, and you know as as, as it's been a long time since mm. I've had to deal with these issues and and I am not as current perhaps as you are stuff so um, I hate to see you know government be big brother and come down and say you know this is how we have to behave as parents but on the other hand I also I'm torn about bringing things into schools that may cause harm to many of the other children. So I guess I'm staying neutral. And, and I just would point out, I mean, as we said, there were developments today in Trenton that, you know, as, as everybody knows, it's the lame duck, right? So in the lame duck session, you know, lots of things get rushed through on the final day. Um, you know, controversial things because there would be a new legislature coming into place. But it's my understanding that the bill that would have made it more difficult to obtain exemptions, um, they thought at one time there was enough support. There was it was, it was a very close vote. And I think there was a, a 21st senator who agreed to do it, but then maybe backed out of it. So as of right now, it doesn't have the support to pass. So, you know, this may be something to monitor over the next couple of weeks before the council, you know, feels the need to weigh in on it. Um, you know, I'm sure it will be reintroduced in the next session. But they're going back to work on it on Tuesday. Yeah, but, but again, if it didn't pass this time around, something <laughs> will have to change. Uh, you know, they'll have to find another vote somewhere. Mm -hmm. 
with the new legislature. David, no comment? Leo? But I agree with you, Stephanie, that it should be up to the parents to make the decision about the vaccination. Sometimes some kids, they really got so sick that I can't believe the vaccination is good for them sometimes. But uh, it's up to the parent to decide what I, they want to do. That's it. I'm torn on this one because I've seen both sides. Um, when I was first married, and we started having children. Our friends were at the same time having children. And one of those kids was uh, vaccinated or received an immunization for uh, the measles and rubella. It was three at once. And uh, that child sustained major brain damage and will need to be taken care of for the rest of his life from getting a vaccination. So, you know, I challenge some of these lawmakers who want to, you know, there has to be a balance on what government can tell us to do with our children on, and I, I agree that certain immunizations may be necessary, especially in outbreaks and in certain instances, but to just pump them with all different types of chemicals because they can, uh, I, I don't agree with that. I think the government has to, there has to be a balance between citizens and the government on, on what we do to our children. Um, and where, do, you know, if you allow that to happen where you can do anything, where, where does it stop? What's next? So um, I'm, I'm against it as it stands now. I think there has to be some reasonable uh, restraints and, and reasonable ways that parents can be involved on, on limiting the amount they can do at one time, like Stephanie said. And, uh, you know, I always think a little Danny every time this subject comes up now because I've seen firsthand what a, a bad vaccination can do to somebody. So that's that. Next. Um, my final thing is resident parking stickers for Thompson Street. Uh, this email would be to confirm the ordinance to include Thompson Street at the January 14th meeting would be approved. Three other streets will be considered Hamilton, Vanderbeek, and Franklin, Anderson, and Clarendon uh, will be added at the January 28th meeting so we have time to properly notify the residents. So the only one that's been notified currently is Thompson. Okay. What are we doing about 2nd Street and all the, all the other streets? Are we forgetting about them? Currently, the only ones that are in play that I'm aware of is Hamilton, Vanderbilt, Franklin, Anderson, and Clarendon. Uh, there's no mention of those because of, I think, the public support that came out. There did not seem to be a um, huge support of the community to have residential parking stickers. And that's when we got into the $5 figure and um, was not, not one of our uh, highly supported uh, suggestions. I don't think they fully understood that. I think we need to open that back up to them because... It's fine. We can we can open it back up, but they, they need to they need to fully understand that number one the five dollar fee is forever, so it's not like a, a game breaker, and the only reason we're charging five dollars is because the ordinance from the last twenty some odd years since there's been residential parking has been five dollars. I guess it's not about the city making five dollars. It's about helping to try to help and uh, keep people from abusing parking in the area. But uh, I'll still go back and say this. I don't care how many residential parking areas you make, if you don't enforce it, you're wasting your time. So we need to make sure that it's enforced and you know, it's the only way we're gonna fix it. If you don't enforce it, the laws are nothing if they're not enforced, so we're wasting our time. And we know that's a problem today, that it's not being enforced the way it should be, so you know, we have we, to work with that. We wanna come up with a plan, maybe put another parking guy on or something where they just go around and take care of the residential parking areas. Something has to be done. Understood. Uh, that would complete the city manager's um, issues for the Committee of the Whole for January 14, 2020. Okay. With that, to have a motion to open to the public, please. All, friends. All in favor? Aye. 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 No one's opposed. With that, anybody who would like to speak, please come to the podium, give your name to the clerk, and you will have three minutes. Thank you. Lorelei Coran, um, I'm at, what, 170 Prospect in Hackensack. Good evening, Council. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm just here to first say thank you to Kathy for going to the meeting for the FAA. I apologize for not being able to meet you there. 
But it is a positive thing, and I think um, we got a reverse 911 maybe with the information on there that residents should fill out the survey. I think the problem is that the document is so big is that people aren't going to be able to understand or read that is a positive thing because we've had so much negative things going on here that I'm wondering if there's some way to put out some word that, you know, vote yes, kind of, you know, that kind of attitude, like have another reverse 911 if you want to get it in before the 30th, but maybe put in, you know, this is a good thing, it's going to reduce our noise, you know, so that they know they should reply positively. Um, I'm sure, I don't know if Ridgewood and a lot of the northern towns, Ramsey, are going to get impacted negatively, but... Um, not really. Not the, really. There was only a very small portion by Route 80 of like where Lodi is there, okay. which is more commercial than residential. Right. That really changed, in, in, you know, slightly. Okay. Um, but if you remember last time, you know, Mawa was very concerned, even though it's at 3,000 feet. Right. Mm -hmm. Which is a little ridiculous, but... Right. And okay. I think what they're saying is just in case, in anticipation that they may get some negatives, it would be nice to have, have some a lot of positives. Yeah, and we're trying to hand these things out, and it, and it kind of says, are you in favor, you know? But it, it's tough. Yeah, to, it's you tough know. to hand out things. I remember years ago when we were trying to fight the airport, you know, doing handouts and stuff. Even in the condos, they didn't go around well in the apartment buildings. So I thought the re uh, reverse 911 that you did do was a good option. But I think somehow in that message, we need to say that this is a, a good thing. Please, you know, respond positively if you can. Mm -hmm. All right, Ted, maybe um, we can have Jack here or Frank up with something that some wording or something that lets people know um and just quickly um in my three minutes is uh, about the plastic bag ordinance um there was the anjack i believe gary said he forwarded a copy of the email which came from us uh came to us from anjack mm -hmm. which says there's 106 towns now in the state that have passed the plastic bag ordinance uh, we submitted an ordinance um which was modeled again uh, from the ANJAC one to uh, the council here for them to approve. We see it happening more and more. I think we should get on the bandwagon because I think here and here, um, ANJAC says that uh, meanwhile, lo local ordinances will begin to solve the plastic bag problem in your community. And so I think they're seeing if the local towns do it, the state you know, will have more backing, okay, because we're seeing the local towns do it. So my encouragement is that we should, you know, look into passing it, and, you know, if you need a copy of this, Ted, I can pass it. I got it. You got that one? I okay. got it somewhere. All right, so I think that was it. And again, in the garden, the community garden, we did talk about putting the bees in there, so we're really happy to hear that it's being, you know, positively looked at by you guys. Um, we'd love to have bees there because it'll help uh, Dave's tomato plants next year. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next, please. Regina DePasco, Parker Avenue. Um, when you brought up the wind turbines, it reminded me of just two weeks ago, one fell in New York City and the wind knocked it over. <laughs> Where was that? And so I would I'd just caution that it it fell on a car. It was it was a bad it was a bad thing. Um, I don't know if that if the permits for it. I don't know if it was done properly, but it's a, it's a heavy duty thing to put in. As far as the plastic bag ordinance, you know, what Lorelei said, the state is stumbling in that direction. We should get on board so we can, even if, if we don't do it first, when the state does it, we're ready. Um, one other thing, um, the most asked question in Hackensack Facebook groups, when's my garbage? When's my recycling? Put what get what gets picked up? Wait, wait, wait! I have I have something for you. Okay. <laughs> no, 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 no! Look. Okay, there was an article. Thank God you put back to everything every week because that solves a lot of problems. But there was an article on um, a, count, a town in South Jersey that uses the Recycle Coach app. So the state bought this app. And every community can use it. Guess what? We're in it already. We look. This is my schedule for this week. Today was yard waste and garbage. Tomorrow is bulk pickup. That's me. What's it called again, Regina? Recycle, Recycle coach. coach. Recycle Coach. coach. You look. You download. You put in your city, and hack, hack and sack is in there. Is it correct? Is it? It's is correct. It correct? Yeah. Yard waste and recycling today. Tomorrow is bulk. Christmas trees was even on the 
calendar. Wow. I don't know how we got into that. I'll be searching. But we're there, and it's a good thing. And if you could advertise it, put it out there. Yeah. I, I'm not kidding. The most asked question, mm -hmm. what goes out? When does it go out? People were asking about Christmas trees this, this month. It just, and, and, and the night before, it sends me a notification of what goes out. Nice. All right. <laughs> I'm on board. Thank Bob, you for that. here, this is what goes out. My husband is Bob. Here, this is what goes out tomorrow, okay? Yeah, so we have it. Yeah, Cost right. us nothing. I mean, just if you advertise it, I it would have been really helpful to have when we didn't know what was what. <laughs> when we were switching around, but it has, oh yeah, see, look, it says Christmas tree tomorrow. Yep. Yeah. It, it's accurate. Okay. Well, it, All right. thank God so, something's accurate because that calendar never seems to No, and but I don't know where they got the information I think, from. I don't but know, it, but, but right I'm going to find now out. it's right. So, you and I are on parallel lines, I, I will follow that dream right to the end because if, okay. if that solves that problem, I'm on board oh, 100%. Yeah. Yes, Thank but you. I just would ask that the city publicize yeah. it. Yeah, we didn't know that. Yeah. I'm you. in. <laughs> Next, please. Maybe they pick it up from our website. Yeah, they do. Yeah. They go right. Oh, they they Hi, Louis De Sepala, 314 Third Street, Hackensack. Um, yeah, just a comment uh, further on the um, plastic bag. bag um, uh, regulation. Um, you know, thank you for considering it, and uh, thanks, Laura, Laura for um, you know spearheading it and helping draft the resolution. The only thing I want to add is that um, I agree with the uh, previous speaker that I think it is inevitable. Um, so I think you already mentioned that you have a list of um, municipalities that have already enacted it, um, and it is growing. Uh, Paramus again went into effect January first. Um, and also at the state level, right? There's two, um, there's, there's the state, uh, the assembly version and the uh, Senate version. The Senate version has already passed and the assembly, um, I think it still um, has not been voted on. But I think that is inev inevitable. I think it's worth to um, start discussing it now because if the state passes it, then you, know, you will have to uh, enact it. Uh, one further uh, point I wanna make is that, you know, mostly all the municipalities that are on the list, you know, have plastic bag, bands, but some of them also included some other items like polystyrene, and uh, some of them also included plastic, um, single-use plastic straws. Um, the state level one will prohibit also plastic bags, uh, polystyrene, and single-use plastic straws. So that's something you may want to consider, you know, if you're looking at the plastic bag ban, to maybe consider those items too. And I do a lot of cleanups, and, and those items are just as um, all over the place, just as much as plastic bags. Um, so I, I think it's worth to at least start considering it now, you know, because that's mm -hmm. something that could happen at the state level. Um, also regarding the uh, B-City, um, like Laura Light mentioned, you know, that's something that we have been considering at the Environmental Commission. And um, I think that's, some, I'm glad that, that it's also on the agenda. Um, also, in, in addition to that, I think one thing that I'm, I concentrate on is I think we need a lot more native plants in our city. Um, if you look at Johnson Park, I was there uh, one day in the summer walking, and I saw this monarch butterfly. And it was kind of sad because it was looking for a place to, you know, to feed on, and there was just no plants in the area for it. So what's good for the bees will be good for the butterflies, will be good for the birds, and also good for humans. Um, so that's something that I think, um, for example, Pedra had recently presented her proposal for the Serenity Park and Stye Park. Um, that's something that would increase you know, our, our share of native plants in, in, in the area. And you look at a lot of our open space and even private property, a lot of grass, a lot of you know, exotic plants, not a lot of native plants. So that's something that we should also consider as we, maybe that's one of the things, requirements for becoming a bee city. So we'll be looking into that also. But thank you. Thank you. Oh, one more thing, I did submit uh, uh, several complaints uh, as uh, Deputy Mayor Canestrino suggested for the I'm in a two-story house, and, and to certain times, maybe three, four times a month, I get a lot of vibration in the house, and that's and I, every time I put it right into the online form. So thank you for. Thank you. It's helping. Get a positive comment in I about will. the flight path now. Thank you. I got one now that's tonight. Anyway, let's hope we get a lot more from this audience, right? Ma'am. Hello and good afternoon to everyone. How are you? My name is Venus Nelson, and 855 Main Street in Hackensack is my address. 
Um, I just wanted to introduce myself and say hello, um, but I'm also here on behalf of the Rent Stabilization Board. Um, I am the chairwoman, and I just wanted to kind of push forward on two quick, very things. Um, we, well, uh, around last, last year, this time, um, the Rent Stabilization Board, we got together, and we wanted to, um, we're still working on the ordinance, but there was one line in particular that we wanted to push forward, um, and that's to get the, this line in the ordinance to match the city statute. I know our board attorney sat with the city attorney on that, but we just haven't heard anything back. So I was just wondering if that was something that was on the table that you guys have discussed, or if we can get some kind of feedback on that. And um, briefly, while I have only three minutes, I just wanted to um, see if we can get more people to attend the Rent Stabilization Board meeting. Um, I know a lot of people have a lot of thoughts on the new buildings and things like that, that's something that we can't change, but it would be good to um, have more people attend, um, see if people can just listen in to see what's going on in Hackensack from other boards, that would be great. And um, to get more people to join the board, that would also be great. We meet, we try to meet as often as, as possible now that we have um, a, a substantial group, now that we have a full members. Um, but again, it would be just great to get more people to come and see if we can promote the changes that we want to see in Hackensack. Great. That's my time. Thank Steve, you. did you want to address yeah, are, are you going to be around for a few minutes? Yes, I will. I, I'll, I'll speak to you rather than waste the council's time. I'll speak okay. to you um, when we break. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Thanks Thank for you. joining the board. Thank no you. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Marty Smith, 245 Prospect Avenue, member of the Hackensack Condo Co-op Advisory Board and the chairman of the Traffic Safety and Street Lighting Committee. At the October uh, meeting of 2019, I brought to your attention the fact that the Condo Co-op Advisory Board, about two years ago, had requested the council to contact public service to see about improving the street lighting on Prospect Avenue. Mr. Ehrenberg at that time said he wasn't in his current position as city manager and didn't know whether that had been done or not, but that he would check into it. I was wondering if you have had an opportunity to do that. I have. You have? I have. And were they contacted? Well, I, I want to take away your... You, okay, you, thank you. Your, you finished. Okay. Up. Secondly, at that same meeting, uh, I brought to your attention the intersection of Central Avenue and 2nd Street, where the church is located. On Central Avenue, there are two designated crosswalks and two stanchions. On Summit Avenue at Golf Place, where the synagogue is located, <coughs> there is one designated crosswalk and no stanchions. I asked Mr. Ehrenberg why that existed, and he said he would check into that as well. I don't know if you had an opportunity. I did, and I'll give that answer also. Thank you. Next, uh, I want to thank Mr. Ehrenberg for making arrangements for me to have a ride along with Lieutenant Patel of the Traffic Department of the Hackensack Police Department. And we drove around Prospect Avenue, Summit, and a couple of other streets doing a general survey of the area. I pointed out areas of interest to us as far as designated crosswalk locations where they are needed. At the end of our ride along, he said to me we would have to bring in an engineering firm to make a survey. Now from my perspective, I don't think we have to use taxpayers' money at hundreds of dollars an hour to tell us how many pedestrians cross an intersection, how many cars go up and down ha Prospect Avenue, how many ambulances, buses, fire engines, UPS, and FedEx trucks. We all know that Prospect Avenue is a very busy street and that we have very little protection except for intersections where we currently have traffic lights. So in my initial report to you, in October of 2018, when I first gave you these streets and intersections that were our concern, so far, Nothing has been done. To my knowledge, the only intersections that have had new designated crosswalks are areas where new construction 
has taken place, such as Salem Street and Main Street, where a new apartment building went up, Salem Street and State Street, which was recently converted from a one-way to a two-way street. Mm -hmm. Now, I can show you article after article that I have here about the proliferation of pedestrian accidents that are occurring throughout Bergen County. If you probably read in the lo local newspaper the record of an accident in Teaneck where two men were hit by a car, one was killed, the other one was in a coma in the hospital. And the reason for this happening was that up until 1971, the street in question where they were hit had a speed limit of 25 miles an hour. Then somebody with a great idea came along and raised the speed limit to 35. Now after this accident occurred, now Teaneck is reducing the speed limit to 25. That is not being proactive, that's being reactive. We're having too many pedestrians struck by cars, some are hit and run accidents, some the drivers stay at the accident scene. But we have to have protected intersections for our residents and for our visitors to Hackensack. Okay. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Um, gonna Ted? Have, I, I'm going to answer your questions. The councilman, uh, Mr. Mataglia, and myself and several members of the police department met with um, PSE and G to discuss lighting. Lighting is a real consideration for the city because we have what I refer to as dark spots mm -hmm. and locations that are bad. We've asked the police department to provide us a list. One of the things that I did was that all of the accidents that have occurred that were pedestrian related, I now have them collating those and we're gonna do an overlay to see how many of those actually occur multiple times because there is grant funding available from PSE&G to no cost to the taxpayer, but it's basically a limited resource and it should be on a needs basis. I don't wanna just go to one section of town and say, you know, these lights are all old, so we'll just change all those to the new ones and solve our problem. The city of Hackensack has a pedestrian issue as far as accents. The part that you and I kind of separate a little bit is that enforcement is a key component and if they're not enforced for jaywalking and these people are allowed to keep crossing the street wherever they want to, they put on a black sweatshirt, they put their earbuds on and they walk out in front of you. I'm here very, very early in the morning and I ride with one foot covering the brake pedal because this goes on every day here. Um, but the issue is, is that these people, and I'm referring to pedestrians, think for some strange reason that they have an immunity when they walk out in front of a car now since they changed that law. You're only protected if you're in the crosswalk. And obviously if you're in the crosswalk when you follow the traffic display for pedestrians at traffic lights. These people just walk out in front of you all day long and apparently they think you're just gonna stop because they walked out in front of you. So I am sharing your concerns with pedestrians but the educational part of this and the enforcement part of this, the three E's of traffic, engineering, enforcement, education, have to come together. So I am working with the police department to find these solutions. The other conversation you had is why we have not put these crosswalks in. We currently have an intersection where we had a handicapped parking spot down by the, I never say this right, EC, EC, by Broadway. EC, EC, DC. EC, DC. EC, DC school. So by taking out a handicapped reserved parking spot, we're gonna put a crosswalk for this. The cost of just dropping the curb on one side of the street, not the whole thing, was $6,500. So every one of these crosswalks we park, and we're, you're talking about twelve to $15,000 to put these in here. Those things have to be included in the budget. So Mr. Mangan and I will start to go through the 2020 budget. We'll get the offers from the police department. We'll identify these things. But this is like a city that if you wanted to put in yellow curbs, and we're going to paint every curb 50 feet from a stop sign because that's what the law says, 
we'd run out of paint because we couldn't afford all this because we'd be painting every curb. So this is the difference when you're in a city and you're not in a small locale town because the city has city problems. I'm not, I'm not trying to undermine what you're saying and I'm not trying to say that you're not right. But the problem is resources have to be managed because to add all these things in here, you're talking about lots of money, sir. Do we have money currently in our budget for the installation of designated crosswalks in the city? Not just the installation of crosswalk, it's the installation of the handicap, ADA compatible handicap ramps that have to go in with them. You just can't have a crosswalk going to a curb. And they have to be certified the curb has by to be an engineer. Cut out. It has to have a, I don't know what it's called. I understand that. Dots. And but you know, said there, it's about six to seven thousand. I understand dollars. the idea of the the ADA ramps. Right. But then again, you have to understand that it's the crosswalks that make people safer crossing the street. Will not allow us to put crosswalks in without no. the ADA. Community. Well, I've seen new ADA ramps put in on Summit Avenue north of Passaic right. at three we're, we're different intersections. In, we're putting them in through the city as part of our budget plan from the year before, which is how we do things. Right um, now is. However, I do not see ADA ramps placed on Summit Avenue on the west side of Summit Avenue, which leads me to believe that the city is not going to install designated crosswalks on Summit Avenue itself without the placement of those ramps there. We're way, we're way, I don't want to turn it into a debate because we're way past the three minutes, but we, there, there's programs out there. We're putting ADA, on my way home I just passed by, by Franklin and the Prospect, all new, yeah. even on the place. islands, we had to put them, the new cutouts and, and ADA compatible ramps as part of the projects which we plan a year in advance. So these things, we just can't say next week we're going to start putting in crosswalks. It doesn't, we can't work like that. We have to plan. It has to go in next year's budget, which you'll be working with, or this year's budget, with Mr. Mangan and, and the council to figure out, put money towards it so we can do it. So. That's, that's where we're at right now. But uh, I, and I'll tell you what, American Legion Drive and Prospect needs a crosswalk. Golf and Prospect needs a crosswalk. I'll be the first one to say it. There's even cutouts, that's but right. they're not ADA compatible cutouts. Exactly. So, yeah. They have to be designed by an engineer. They have to be approved. They have to meet ADA requirements. Every year the standards go up and they add more to this thing. So it, it, it becomes, people, I, 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 try, I try not to make excuses for our actions but they just keep adding to the litany of things to do because that was a good idea, so we'll put more on top of that, and that will be more of a good idea. And Thanks it, for your time. Happens. We, we, we were, we're getting it done, but it does take some time, Mr. But, uh, right Thank now, you. right now, we, we, we got like about $2 million, and we are going to do the paving about maybe 25 streets. Right. right now, we are doing from Passe all the way up to Ross. And if you guys go there, you're going to see that the construction company is doing all the sidewalks and the curve and the the ADI, you know, everything is getting done. It takes time. So the money is already allocated. Good evening, Gary Tizano, Fairmount Avenue, you, um, Environmental Commission. Uh, three items real quick, because I know you guys want to go in the back. Uh, number one, on the plastic bag ordinance, yesterday was the, the email that went out that I sent to everybody from the leader, Jennifer Coffey, from the ANJEC. Mm -hmm. And today, with the articles in the record about how close it came to being passed down at the State House. And uh, it got tied up in a late type of time frame that it didn't get into the Assembly, but there's still a little debate between the, uh, the Leader of the Senate, Sweeney, and the Governor. But it'll come to pass because it's, we're halfway there already, and that's what it seemed to read to, in the paper about the plastic bag. So the State. They said within the year, according to the article, if it's true or not, we should have it in place as a state as a state code. So it would be wise to get on board ahead of time, Hackensack, with a, with a county seat. We are a city, and the uh, Environmental Commission supports that all the way. Number two, uh, as far as the, I mentioned some, I mentioned some, heard some talk about budgets. We're asking to uh, have some type of a line item budget for the Environmental Commission. I spoke to Ted and um, briefly about having a list to expand the garden. But along those lines, we've been discussing what some of the organizations do 
uh, like in towns as well as the school board to have some type of a trust underneath the umbrella, let's say of recreation or of the school. And that's why I wanted to steer that towards the city attorney. I don't understand the process, but it would help to defray some of the costs for the city if we can get donations to, to, for our projects. And that's what it's all about, saving money. And if we can work along those lines, tell us how to do it, because there are people out there and organizations ready, ready to send money in for, our, for these type of projects. So that was that item. Number three, we could be number one, Dave, because Ridgewood is a village and we are a city. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Okay. Motion to close the vote. Oh, Jim? Hang on. If you could just 30 seconds, all right, uh, if you don't mind. Uh, because this is the, the portion of the meeting, you know, where the residents get up and, and you know, uh, you know, give their piece, um, you know, if they give their name and address. Uh, so I just wanted to do that, okay? Uh, Jim Mangan, uh, 245 Prospect Avenue in Hackensack, New Jersey, because I've been a Hackensack resident now for about nine days or so, hey, something hey, like that. Um, you that know, that's, uh, I, I've been talking about uh, buying a condo in Hackensack for, for five years now. Mm -hmm. uh, and for five years now, I've been talking about making Hackensack attractive to investors, you know. Uh, and it's taken me five years, but it's attractive enough to this investor that, uh, yeah. So now, I'm a resident of Prospect Avenue. I apologize because I haven't made my complaint to the FAA yet. Although, I will say this. Uh, on Last Saturday, you know, my son was in the pool, and I was sitting poolside reading a book around 3 p.m., and I was clocking them. Every nine minutes, a, a plane goes by. It's like contractions, uh, literally every There's one going minutes. by right now. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I'll be filing uh, my complaint with the FAA as well. Okay. Thank Just you. wanted to say, uh, you know, hey, welcome to me. So welcome yeah. to welcome to Hackensack. Hackensack. Yeah. Uh, anyone else, sir? <laughs> My name is Milko Millen. I met most of you. I introduced you in my building, 160 Overlook Avenue, when you were running for election. I want to thank Leo first for the, we played soccer already the other night. It was great. Thank you for approving that uh, so our, our senior citizens can play soccer. Leo fall down, measured the, uh, the floor a couple of times. I told him nobody did. Anyway. Hey, but I scored a beautiful goal, he right? He did, yeah. He said, as long as I score the goal, everything is fine. <laughs> anyway, I just want to say just a few words in my may. I, I don't know if maybe it's not the correct time to say it. Uh, I do go around. We meet by Esky store. We meet at the Cheers bar. We meet at different locations. A question is, what's going to come next to the city? You're building beautiful buildings and everything else. What about to bring the people in here during the daytime, uh, during the nighttime? Do you have a vision for that? Yes. I'm gonna tell you, I been around, okay? I was in, uh, I used to go to Hoboken and we used to come hang around in Hackensack. This was in 64, 65. And Hackensack was the place to be. Now Hoboken is the place to be. Okay, you couldn't stay in Hackensack because of the bums and criminals who would come out of the jail. That's what was hanging out there, okay? I'm also familiar with New York City, Hell's Kitchen, where I was the building. It was also, it was a house kitchen, okay, 1980s. It was scary to buy a building there, okay. We bought the building, we are still there, and we are happy to be there. But the neighborhood changed so much. But what's now there, it's a beautiful restaurants, cafes, people are coming, walking around, hanging around, okay. As I mentioned to Leo the other day, I was in Astoria, in the old neighborhood where we played soccer, and it was a dead-end street, almost like scary also. Now you come there, they build a few buildings underneath there is a beautiful restaurant, beautiful places, people come and stay. Uh, women with children and uh, singles and young and old, everybody's coming there. They're not afraid to come anymore there. So this is the thing I think we have to build here so I can answer these guys that this is what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. Something like that to have in Hackensack so everybody can come back to Hackensack again at, uh, and have a good time. Leo, see you at the field. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Nobody else in the public. Motion to close to the public. Oh. Second. All in favor? Uh -huh. Aye. No one's opposed. Any comments before we go back? I just wanted to comment quickly on the plastic bags. Uh, it, it's a shame because, you know, we're blaming plastic bags. 
plastic bags aren't the problem. People are the problem. And, and Bob is right. If we properly dispose of plastic bags and recycle them in a way, um, we wouldn't even be having this. There'd be no need for discussion. But the problem is human beings don't take care of business you know, and when it comes to getting rid of their stuff like plastic. And uh, we end up with plastic bags just everywhere. Um, another thing, there, Bob wrote a great letter. And, uh, you know, so again, it's not the bags, it's people not getting rid of them properly. If we could recycle every plastic bag we picked up, there'd be no issue. Problem is, we throw them all over the place and we find them all over the place. So we're resorting to banning them. The other issue is, I'm very concerned about people having to use some, especially like takeout restaurants and stuff, having to go to more paper bags, which is going to kill more trees. All right, so I'm concerned about that. So I think it's a, it's a double-edged sword in some places. I'm in favor of the ban only because I know people aren't going to change. They're still going to end up all over the place. But uh, one of my concerns is we're going to have a bigger demand for paper bags. And you know, we, when you go to grocery shopping, you're going to bring your big bags that you buy, those, those big lugging bags you get for a dollar that they sell there, and that's fine. We, we use them. Uh, places like... Uh, Costco and BJ's, for instance, they don't have bags there. You bring your own stuff, and you, you carry it out, and that's how most of Europe is. But I'm um, very concerned about the uh, use, more use of paper, and uh, that, that would be counterproductive at the same time. But uh, we'll see where it goes, we'll see where the state goes with it. But this thing with the, also real quick, Tuesday they're going to be right back on this immunization thing, so keep your eyes open on that. So. Motion to uh, go into closed session? All in All in favor? Aye. 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 Whereas the Mayor and Council of the City of Hackensack deem it necessary to discuss certain actions under Section 7B7 and 7B8 of the Open Public Meetings Act, which pertains to matters falling within attorney-client privilege, ongoing litigation, and personnel matters concerning the employment of a current or prospective public employee. Whereas the Mayor and Council of the City of Hackensack is of the opinion that such circumstances may presently exist, and whereas the Mayor and Council wishes to discuss the following issues, personnel matters, ongoing litigation, matters involving attorney-client privilege, matters involving the purchase, lease, or acquisition of real property, any pending or anticipated litigation or contract negotiations. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Mayor and Council of the City of Hackensack deem it necessary to exclude the public from this discussion. The outcome of the discussion will be disclosed within 90 days or at such time as the interests of the City do not require confidentiality. I know from uh, my end of things, there's a couple of resolutions on the agenda regarding ongoing litigation, uh, workers' compensation matter. Uh, Lorenzo Lett versus City of Hackensack, and also the Summit Church case. I also will probably be speaking to the council about the Underwood Properties, Oprah litigation, and the Salkin litigation. And as usual, if any other cases come up, I will advise of same when we come out of closed session. Okay. Good evening, everybody. Madam Clerk? Uh, we need a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn to council the whole? Executive session first. At the executive session. All right. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. None opposed? Now the council. Now the call. Motion to I talk. adjourn to council the whole. All right. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 None opposed? Okay.